This is Keith with CADSharp.com. In this video, I'm demonstrating a macro I created for a presentation delivered at SOLIDWORKS World 2012 covering the 99 must-know methods and properties of the SOLIDWORKS API. The purpose of the macro is to show the incredible automation capabilities of a macro that uses only 99 unique SOLIDWORKS API calls. I'm going to replay the macro again and explain in more detail what is going on. First, however, let me share with you the background case study. Imagine that you have been placed on a team that creates a simple crank mechanism based on customer specifications. The crank consists of a shaft, arm, and handle. Material options include steel or aluminum. The shaft and arm are chosen by the customer and assembled by a coworker. You are then tasked with creating the handle component, adding the handle to the assembly, ensuring that safety standards are met in the arm and handle design, creating the final drawing, and then saving it all out as a pack and go zip file which another engineer will pass on to the manufacturer. So now let's replay the macro. Starting off, I have the company part template open, which contains a custom property called author. Next, I browse for the existing assembly containing the shaft and crank. Then I press run and the handle automation begins. The top plane is used to create sketches for a boss extrude and a cut extrude. Before the sketches are created, however, the system options are modified to prevent the dimension dialog box from showing. Next, a 1mm fillet is applied to the largest cylindrical face, which is found by traversing all of the faces and examining the underlying geometric data. Then the macro assigns a name to that circular face called handle concentric, which will be used during the mating process later. Then more traversal is used to find a circular edge at the base of the handle shaft, and this is named handle coincident. Next, the macro creates two new configurations, one called aluminum and the other called steel, and the materials for those configurations are changed accordingly. The original default configuration is deleted as well. Next, the part appearance is changed to yellow. After that, the existing author custom property is assigned my initials, and a description custom property is added with the part number. Finally, the part is saved to the same folder as the assembly I browsed for earlier. The automation of the assembly occurs next. The part that was just created is inserted and the macro begins searching the arm for a named entity called arm concentric. This would have been added by whoever created the arm. Once it is found, it is selected because in order to mate entities, they must be selected. Then the handle is searched for the entity called handle concentric, which the macro created earlier. This is also selected, then a concentric mate is added. Next, the macro performs the same kind of traversal to create the coincident mate. Now that the mating is done, the arm's material is determined by looking at its current configuration and then the arm is resized to meet certain factors of safety. Since the arm is aluminum, resizing will occur. To do that, the macro accesses the feature data of the BOSS extrude used to create the arm, changes the depth property, and then modifies the feature's definition. To change the handle length, a different approach is taken. Instead of modifying the underlying BOSS extrude data, the dimension that controls the depth is selected and its value is modified, and then the part is rebuilt. The handle components configuration is also changed so that the handle material matches the arm material. Finally, the assembly's view is changed to isometric and zoomed to fit, and then the assembly is saved. The last portion of the macro handles the drawing automation. A new drawing is created using the current default template, the sheet format is modified to contain the correct scaling, and a shaded isometric view of our assembly is added. After increasing the view scaling, we auto-balloon the view. Since the balloons are not located where I want, the macro repositions them before adding a bill of materials to the sheet. Next, separate sheets are created from each component that is visible in the isometric view. Each sheet is renamed to the name of the component and contains a standard 3-view layout with third angle projection. The macro then inserts the model items, selects the newly added dimensions, and automatically repositions them so they don't overlap the model. Next, the drawing is saved and a pack-and-go is created in zip format. All documents are closed and the temporary working files are deleted from the hard drive. Lastly, the path to the pack and go is printed in the user form, which we can copy and paste in an email that we can send to coworkers. If we go to the folder containing the files, we see that the temp files were deleted and the pack and go is present. If I extract the zip, we see that final versions of each document were created so that the original files were preserved. Opening up the drawing, we can check to make sure that everything looks okay, including the bill of materials pulling in the part numbers. 
Opening up the assembly, we see that the mates were added properly. And if I select face properties in the menu, we can see the named entity that was used for the concentric mate. We can also see that the configurations and the custom properties were created properly as well. I hope this gives you a taste of the power of the SOLIDWORKS API. The code for this macro and the accompanying video tutorial explaining how to use the 99 API calls are available as part of our premium membership at cadsharp.com. Thanks for watching.